Now, on another matter, our colleague Senator Grassley has done an outstanding job of processing the President's judicial nominees, beginning with the President's selection of Judge Neil Gorsuch to serve on the Supreme Court. Chairman Grassley and members of the Judiciary Committee continue their important work today as the committee holds a hearing for three more of the President's judicial nominees, including two well-qualified nominees to our circuit courts, uh, Justice David Strauss and Mr. Stuart Kyle Duncan. The committee's hearing today is particularly important because it means that one member of this body, in this case, the junior senator from Minnesota, cannot single-handedly block the committee from considering an extraordinarily well-qualified nominee to serve on our circuit courts. That nominee is Minnesota Supreme Court Justice David Strauss. Justice Strauss is an extremely qualified, widely admired member of Minnesota's highest court. He was raised by a single mother, is the grandson of a survivor of the Nazi death camp at Auschwitz, Justice Strauss graduated first in his class from the University of Kansas Law School. He's clerked on the Court of Appeals and the United States Supreme Court. He worked for several years in private practice until he joined the faculty of the University of Minnesota Law School. He was appointed to the Minnesota Supreme Court in 2010, and in 2012, Minnesota voters elected him to a full term on their highest court. His reputation in the Minnesota legal community is impeccable. It's no wonder the American Bar Association, hardly a right-wing organization, gave him its highest rating unanimously, well qualified. Nevertheless, the junior senator from Minnesota does not support Justice Strauss receiving so much as a hearing. That approach is untenable in light of recent actions of our Democratic colleagues. A little more than four years ago, they eliminated the supermajority requirement for ending debate on lower court nominees they did so, they said, because they believed that a minority of the Senate should not be able to prevent the confirmation of a nominee who enjoyed the support of a majority of this body. Perhaps our Democratic colleagues now feel buyer's remorse over the change to Senate rules they jammed through this body, but they should not be allowed to use the committee's blue slip courtesy, which is neither a committee rule nor a Senate rule, as another way to block the consideration of nominees with majority support. As Chairman Grassley has pointed out, that approach is not the way the blue slip courtesy was first used, nor is it the way the vast majority of the Judiciary Committee chairmen have used it. And after Senate Democrats to change the Senate's rules to prevent 41 senators from stopping a nominee, our Democratic colleagues can now surely not think it's tenable to give just one senator absolute power to do so. They decided 41 senators ought not to be able to stop a nominee. How could they now argue that one senator should be able to, in effect, blackball a nominee? In this case, the junior senator from Minnesota acknowledges that it is undeniably true that Justice Strauss is a committed public servant whose tenure as a professor at the University of Minnesota underscores just how much he cares about the law. Yet our colleague objects to the committee even considering his nomination. Why does he want to block a widely respected and accomplished state Supreme Court justice from his own state, whom his constituents actually support? Because our colleague doesn't agree with the United States Supreme Court justices whom the nominee admires, one of whom the nominee happened to clerk for. So I applaud Chairman Grassley for not allowing the blue slip courtesy to be abused in this fashion, and I look forward to learning more about Justice Strauss' views from today's hearing.